Section 2, we shall cover central tendency, variability, probability, and theoretical distribution. So let's move on to central tendency. So we start with the mean. Mean, also known as the average, is the total sum of all the items divided by the number of the items. The mean can be misleading when there are extreme values in a data set. Trimmed mean is determined by discarding the lowest and the highest scores in a data set before calculating the mean. So, for example, let's say we've got 2, 4, 6. So, the mean of this uh, data set will be x bar. We add the total, num total sum of the sum of the data set divided by the number of the items in the data set. So, 4 plus, uh, 2 plus 4 plus 6 is 12. So, 12 is the sum divided by the number of the data set is 3. So, the answer will be 4. So, now, sometimes uh, in data entry, there are some errors that can occur, which can cause us to have some figures or numbers which are not like in sync or corresponding to the uh, data set you have. For example, you might have 2, 4, 8, 10. This is just an example. So, so now, um, then maybe you can put like 50. So now, what it means when you um, when you want to incorporate the issue of the trend mean, it means if we start by calculating the normal mean, it means we add the numbers. So it will be it will be like uh, fifty plus ten sixty, uh, eight plus two is ten, that makes it seventy. So the total will be seventy four divided by the number of items seventy four. Uh, then it's difficult to use. So, so it will be like one. It's like fourteen point eight. That's your mean. That's I did this. Calculation by head, so you can cross check with the calculator. Um, but now, when you are doing the trimmed mean, it means you remove. Remember, trimmed mean is determined by discarding the lowest and the highest scores. So the highest is 50, and the lowest is 2. So these ones we discard them. Then we work with the remaining 3. So if you add these ones, so the trimmed mean, uh, maybe I'll put it to you. Trimmed will be 4 plus 8 plus 10, which is 22. So 22 divided by 3, you get 7.7. I 7.3. 7.3. So you can compare now. This is the, the ordinary mean with the trimmed mean. You can see that there is a big difference between the two. So according to the fourth point, say data entry errors are commonly responsible for outliers in a data set. A noticeable difference between the ordinary and the trimmed mean can be an indication that such errors have occurred. So in this data set, you can see that uh, 50 might be a data entry error but remember we are saying it's commonly it doesn't mean it's always so but but when there's a difference between the trend mean and the ordinary mean it means that uh, you have to go back and cross check your data set so that's how we use the trend mean and the ordinary mean so let's move on to the next the median the median is the middle score in a range distribution of scores. Remember when you're discussing the percentiles, we say the median is the 50th percentile. 
um, unlike the mean, it is not influenced by extreme scores. To determine the position of the median, use the following formula, n plus 1 divided by 2. This is the position of the median, not the median, it's the position of the median in the data set, where n is the number of items in the data set. So let's give an example. So like, for example, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8. So remember, we've got 4 items. So if if you are to determine them, you say 4. So the number of item n is 4. So it's 4 plus 1 divided by 2. So it's 2.5. So remember, first of all, before you determine the position of the median, your data must be ranked. It means must be arranged in ascending order or a descending order. So here it's in ascending order 2, 4, 6, 8. So now when you get the position of the mean, it's, you see, remember we said 4 plus 1 divided by 2 is 2.5. So it means the position is 2.5. So we count 1, 2. So half is here. So even if you count from the right, say 1, 2, half is here. So it means the median is the average of these two. So it will be 4 plus 4, 4, and 4 plus 6, 4 plus 6, divided by 2, which gives you 5. So your median is 5. So let's give you one more example. Let's say it's 1, 2, 5, 5 7. 10. Remember, this data is already in ascending order. So, if I to determine the median, in this case, it's five numbers. So, it's 5 plus 1, which is 6, divided by 2, 3. So, the median position is 3. So, it's 1, 2, 3. This is the median. So, even if you count from the right, it's 1, 2, 3. So, it's, this is the median. So that's all you have to know about the median is the middle score. So remember this formula, n plus 1 divided by 2 is the position, position of the median. Position, not the median, but the position. So remember, once you get the position, remember the other thing, your data must be ranked in ascending or descending order. So let's move on to, to the mod. The mod is the most frequently occurring score in a distribution. It is not affected by the existence of extreme scores in a data set. There, there can be more than one mod within a single data set. So when you're saying the mod is the most frequently occurring score, most frequently, which means the most common. So we can give a number two, four, Four, five, seven. So if you are asked what is the mode of this data set, it's four. Because it's the most occurring one. It occurs two times than, the, than all the rest of the data set. So let's give another example. You can say one, one, two, four, five, five. Nine. So if you ask what is the mode of this distribution, remember one occurs two times and five occurs two times. So remember this statement. There can be more than one mode within a data set. So sometimes examiners may try to trick you uh, so that you won't know what to do. Remember, you are not wrong. There are more than it can be more than one median. So if you ask what's the mode, sorry, not, not median mode, they can be they can be more than one mode within a single data set. So it means in this data set, the mode is one and five. So this is good to go. Remember this point, they can be more than one mode and it cannot be as affected by extreme scores and the mod is the most frequently occurring score in a distribution. So let's move on. The range. The range is the difference between the highest 
and the lowest the highest and the lowest score within a given data set the presence of outliers can affect the range value of the of a data set so let's say for example we are given two four six uh, okay eight ten so, so if you ask the what is the, the the mode is the the, the range sorry is the difference between the highest and the lowest score so this is the lowest and this is the highest in this particular data set so the difference will be 10 minus 2 which gives us 8 so your range will be the range will be equal to 8 the difference between the highest and the lowest so let's say we introduce an outlier let's say an outlier is like 40 so it affects the range now because the new highest will be 40. And this one won't be the highest anymore, but the highest is this one. So now the difference between the highest and the lowest will be 38. So you can see that's what we mean. Like the presence of outliers can affect the range value of a data set. So let's move on. Find, we are doing an example now, find the mean, the median, mode, and range, and the percentage frequency of the number 14 of the following list of values. So remember, you've got your list of values, so before you do any calculations, uh, it might be, for the mean, there's no problem, you can add the numbers, total number, and divide by the total number of items but for the for you to solve the median you have to rearrange your data set in the ranked order so let's move on to the calculations so for you to calculate the mean you, you just add the numbers add the sum of the numbers in the data set divided by the number of scores so it's sum divided by 9 get the mean 15. The median is the middle value of the ranked data set. So it means you have to rank your data into, uh, in this case, it's in ascending order from 13, 14, 16, 18, 21, ascending order. So the median now, remember the formula n plus 1 divided by 2. So you've got 9 items here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's 9 plus 1 divided by 2. So the median is the fifth position. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 14 is the median. If you count from the right, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the median is 14. Remember this formula is to calculate the position. Then the mode is 13 because is the number which is the highest frequency so 14 um, is 18 i mean uh, because it appears four times 14 appears two times so 13 means because it is with a bigger frequency so it's 18 appears four times so it's the mod so the, the the next part is the range calculate the range the range is the difference between the highest and the lowest so it becomes 21 minus 18, which is equals to 8. So let's move on to part B. Part B, the percentage frequency. Remember, just to refresh the B, is calculate the, the percentage frequency of the number 14 of the following list of values. Percentage frequency. So percentage frequency is like how many times the frequency that 14 is occurring divided by the total number of items so now you see that 14 is appearing two times you can see it appears two times here and the total number of items is nine so the percentage frequency is two divided by nine then you get 0 0.222 and this converts to 22 percent so simple enough to do practice question for central tendency so practice question number six 
The table below shows class percentage obtained by student in a particular test. You are required to calculate the mean mark of this test. So now you are given a class percentage. So 1 to 10 percent, the frequency is 0, 11 to 20, 0, and so on up to 91 to 100 is 0. So you are supposed to calculate the mean percentage mark. So I will give you, I will pause the video in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pause. I hope it has been fun in solving this one. So we are moving on to the solution. So uh, I guess you are done. If you are not yet done, you can, you can continue to pause. So I think you are done now. Let's, so let's go to the next item, which is the solution. So for, for you to solve this practice question six, uh, you need first to draw this table so that you won't make any mistake. So you can see this is the data we had. Uh, this is the data that we had, the class percentage and the class frequency. So if you add your class frequencies, you can see that your the total number of items, which is your n, is close to 20. So the class midpoint, so because this is a grouped data, you cannot, uh, you have to find the middle point which represents that class. So for you to find the middle point, you say, you add the, remember, we talked about it when we are doing the view lower limit and view upper limit. So real lower limit plus view uh, upper limit divided by 2. So it's 1 plus 10 is equals to 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. So 11 plus 20 divided by 2 is equals to um, 31 divided by 2 which is equals to 15.5. So you continue until you reach the last one and you get your midpoint. So after you get your midpoint, now you multiply zero class frequency times midpoint, class frequency times midpoint, class frequency times midpoint. That's what we are representing here. So if you multiply, you get these values, these values up to here. So for example, if you say two times thirty five point five, you get seventy one. So once you do that you get the sum of this figure. So this figure uh, we will be your class frequency. So you can just say XF X represents the midpoint and F representing the the frequency. So it's class frequency times um uh, midpoint times class frequency. So let's move on to the next. So now, therefore, the mean is equal to class frequency times midpoint divided by the total number of students, which is your n. So it's 320 divided by 20, you get 66%. Remember, the question was saying the percentage frequency. Uh, remember, the, the, the percentage was, was saying the minimum percentage. Because remember, this class percentages, this class percentage these figures are in percentage so you answer also the mean must be in percentage so thank you for watching if you have any questions concerning this section or you need any further information call us on 074 920 9697 thank you